Hi everyone, so it's Holly with Missouri River Soap. I'm doing something a little bit different today. This was an idea sent to me from a subscriber here on YouTube, and I thought it was such a fun idea. Her idea was to use these impression mats. So I have a lace and I have a wood um, grain. The, the plan is to do leather and lace, but I wasn't able to find any leather-like impression mats, so I thought, the wood would probably be okay for this particular situation. Now one thing that is going to be a bit of a problem is my mold does not work exactly proper with these impression mats. So what I'm probably going to do, let's see I had a mark here. So I will probably just lay it in like so. Okay, you got you have to stay in the mold as you're supposed to, paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it in the mold. There's a little excess here on the end. And then, so I'm going to have mostly just three rows here. And it's going to be flat bars that I'm going to cut more like this. And so then I will just put this guy on the top thereabouts. So some will have the impression and some won't, but we can still use those soap as samples, etc. So that's that's my plan. So what I need to do I put this guy to the side. So here I have my oils. And the next thing I'm going to do is start the batch. So the first thing I want to do is add in the coconut milk and get it blended in. I just like to get the coconut milk blended well into the oils just on the off chance that there's any sort of, um, you know, little bits, bits and bumps in the coconut milk. So I tap the stick blender to release the air from the shaft. And I'm going to add in the lye solution. Everything is at room temperature. It's going to be pretty full. I'm going to be splitting it off quite quickly. I just want to emulsify because I'm going to split the batch in two and in hindsight I probably should have just done two separate batches but I only prepped the one. The fragrances that I'm using today our cashmere from Brambleberry that is going to represent the lace side of things and Wild West from Indigo will be my leathery type fragrance and it does smell so good so here we have the cashmere I'm hoping that's in focus for you okay stir this up so I'm going to look and I have just, let's see, I have to lift it up for a second, hold on, just over 4,000 ml here. So this is just emulsified, there's no trace here yet. And I would not pour it this thin, but it's fine to separate and work with it. So I'm going to pour to 2,000 ml. Okay. 
And so I know that the batch is in half. I have 2,000 ml left in this container. So now I want to pour off just a little bit for the pink. The cashmere does discolor. So I want the pink just to be plain without any scent. So I have just this pretty light pink mica. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. Okay, that's good. So I'll set that over here for a minute. Now into this one is going to be a um, just kind of a tan color. Actually, you know what? I'm jumping the gun. Hold on. I don't want that in there quite yet because I'm going to add in the fragrance, which I already have measured out. Yes, here we go. And this is just the cashmere from Bram and Blair. It smells so good. I've reduced it just a little bit to accommodate for the pink that is not going to be scented. Okay, now I'm going to pour some out for the dark brown in the swirl. Kind of more of the tan, I guess. It is going to um, discolor, but I'm going to add a little bit of a brown just so that we can see what it's gonna look like. Okay, that looks good. All right, so that one is going to be the darker brown, I guess. And then into this one, I'm going to do some titanium dioxide because I want to lighten up the natural discoloring that it's going to do. It's a bit of a blend. So while that tries to turn tan, it's going to be a little bit creamier. That's kind of messy. I do still want this to have a bit of a blend also since it was very thin. Wipe off some of that excess brown. In fact, I think I'm just gonna get some water here. Hold on. I usually have some water here, but I didn't today. <laughs> Running out of room to put everybody. Okay, so now I want to give this just a bit of a blend. <laughs> I want to clean that off before I move on to the next half of the batch. So everything's still quite thin. It is out of trace now. I don't know if you can see that very well. That's nice. Everything's still quite thin. If I pour it right now, that's just going to be too mottled. I want it to keep a little bit of the distinction between the colors obviously as long as we're doing a swirl so i'll clean up a little bit and come back okay so this is getting thicker now so i like this i like it 
I'm going to do an in the pot swirl. It's so pretty. I've always loved pink and brown together. So, I'm going to do, I'm just going to do one little loop around. I don't want it over mixed. So, in with the mold. This is going to be a little bit, you know, off, but we're going to roll with it. Like I said, this is going to be the lace portion. This is just a test batch. And if we like how this turns out, I will either buy more impression mats or I will have a different mold built. So we can get it just so. So you know how scents are so emotional and can take you back to a place in time. So one of my favorite um, scents and basically the number one soap that I ever purchased. I'm going to smack down. While I talk, I'm going to do a cocoa line. So I'm trying to do this where my right hand can work. Anyway, one of my most favorite soaps ever, and pretty much my favorite that is not my own, is from Bohemian Life, and formerly Alamo Candelaria Kim, and it's Leather Rosa. And so it's a mix of leather and rose, and I just, I really adore it. It's just one of my most favorite scents. It was one of those things I wouldn't have thought of, but Kim sent it to me just years ago. And, oh, it was so good. So if you ever have the opportunity to buy that, I highly recommend it. So when the subscriber recommended for me to try, like, a leather, I was all about that. Mixing this leather and the creamy cashmere. It's very creamy from Brambleberry. Not as sharp floral as I've smelled before. We're getting a little, got some chunkiness in the cocoa. So hopefully the other part of my batch is hanging in there. Yikes. All right, I'll turn this a little so I can see it. Oh, this is so good. So it looks like a do kind of need this to set up a little bit. I was hoping the cashmere would move right along. So, my batch, like I said, room temp, very cool. So, I'm not too worried about it over there. You don't want so much that it'll split. But you need enough that the line is actually going to be there. It's messy. It is just messy. All right, I think I'm gonna call that good. Okay, moving along now. It's still quite thin, but at a medium to thick tray, so we should be all right here. Might get a little squirrely. All right, let's do, okay, I'm going to put in the fragrance oil, and I'm just hoping that it 
plays nicely. I've backed off of that a lot just because it's so strong. We don't want it to just knock you over. Okay. So, let me think here. I want to pour off a little bit for my dark brown. In this base, I want it to be some white. edges scraped really nicely so that it's all white. Get it back here for me for a minute. Nice. Into this one, I'm gonna pour some out for, let's see, a tan. Yeah, do a tan in this one. So, I'm using the same color. I don't remember if this one, uh, the leather discolors or not. So I'm just going to put in a little bit here for a tan, a little bit more here for a darker brown. So this leather scent also the minute I sniffed it took me right back to growing up in Ronan Montana and I, we'd go into Ronan Sports and Western which was had um, you know like saddles and tack and all that and so oh that reminded me of that so it's just like right immediately immediately thought of Ronan Sports and Western and growing up there love that leather smell. Mm, this is such a pretty color. It's so creamy. All right. We better get this show on the road. So, here we go. I have a mess. Oh my. I'm just going to roll with it for now. So, here we go with the the lighter brown. Now for the darker brown. I am thankful for that order that just came in. That's how I can keep doing videos. It's by getting orders and selling the goodies that I make. So thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's just, well, let me stir with this spatula. So just around once and oh Lordy, isn't that just the most beautiful thing? I love it. And so this reminds me of who has watched Karen um, with Eden Secret. And one of her greatest ones I loved watching was like, um, I want to say it said Cashmere also. If I can find that video for you, I will. I love, love, love watching her make and cut that soap. It was one of those things that I was a fairly new soap maker. I think I've been making for a while, but YouTube was kind of new on the scene. The first people I watched were Karen and Tiggy with uh, Future Primitive. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead, this is very heavy, so I'm going to go ahead and flood this still to the best, to the best of my abilities here. I mean, it's pretty solid. Isn't that just gorgeous? So 
So this flooding, it just keeps the pressure off. I'm kind of getting out of control here. Um, it keeps the pressure from the pour off of the soap, and so it doesn't just pour right in. It just kind of streams on, as you can probably tell. I guess I'll go ahead and do it like so. I'm going to smack this down. Let's do a little shimmy first. And this releases the air bubbles. So I need to stir this down. You're very careful scraping when you're um, working with an in the pot swirl. You can usually keep the, the definition pretty nicely. And then just kind of push it out. I'm thinking this would also be just both of them, both like sections, each half will be beautiful on its own, in its own right as a soap. So the thought process on this was that it was going to be like a, a his and hers. And that's why I went ahead and did it to be flat because I wanted the impression mat on each side and then it's gonna be a little bit thicker of a bar. I wanted it to be plenty of room to, the, the idea is his, he can suds up on one side, she can suds up on the other, but if you love the blend, just, you know, do your thing with it. So that's why I did the flat bars like this, because if I had taken the full bars, the tall bars, and did half and half, it would have been much more difficult to use. So I'm a little bit nervous about putting in this mat because it's so long. I just want to make sure I get it right. Yikes. I'm scared. I'm so scared. All right, so I think I'm going to drop it. Oh, about like that. I'm hoping this weight on this end is not going to be too much for it. So once again, this end is not going to be amazing because I didn't cut it. And I didn't want to cut it quite yet because this is just a test. And then I can cut it down later or make a new mold like I said. But I just didn't want to cut into it for now. So I do believe I have remembered to do everything that I wanted to do with this batch. So I'm going to let this gel. And by gel, that means it's coming up to a temperature. It's going through like a translucent phase. It, uh, it does cool back down, but it, it helps to make a harder bar of soap sooner, and it helps the colors to be a bit more intense. An ungelled soap is still gonna do the exact same thing. It's just going to, um, take a little bit longer to get harder, and the colors will be a bit more pastel. Not gelling a soap often works out if you're using like a, you know, like a goat milk, and you just want it to be creamy, because if you gel a, a really strongly milked soap, like a full milk soap, often it'll turn, turn tan. So that's, there's, there's just a bunch of different ways on gelling, and reasons to gel, or reasons not to gel, but I gel all of mine, so, we look to be in good shape. I am going to let this sit probably 24 hours and then I will come back and we'll unmold and cut. Okay, so it's been 24 hours. It's time to take a look at this soap. I can tell it ashed quite a bit on the edges. So here we go. Oh, the design is cool. Here we have the design. I see a little bit of air pockets and such, which is gonna be pretty normal for something on the top. Okay, 
So, I always set it on its side, like so. Has a long ways to go to pull out of there. quite a bit of discoloration going on. It's a little bit seeped out of the mold. Hooey! That is yellow. And that's just the fragrance going to discolor. I expect that. Oh, okay. Forgot about that I had this guy in there. A little bit seeped underneath. Okay. Well, I'm trying to think of the best way to tackle this. Probably from this edge. I don't really want to lay it on its top. Though it will end up laying on the bottom. So, one way or another, the design might get a little bit messed up. I would probably just do an impression mat on one side next time. Okay. I better soak that. That's going to take a bit. Okay. Well, we may have to, we'll have to do an update. This is the discoloration in the fragrance oil, this yellow. So it looks like the whole shebang is going to go quite dark, but it will have that pink that did not have any fragrance in it. When I worked with that cashmere before, it wasn't super dark, so I don't know. All right, I'm going to come back with my splitter. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and split this. That looks neat. Of course, keep in mind, this will be a darker tan. So well, these are going to be some hefty bars. This is a little soft still. I probably should have unmolded and waited a bit because I can't actually um, plane off these edges because they have the design. So, hmm. I'm tempted just to keep going so it's done. But I'll just try to be careful. These are going to be rather thick soaps for sure. I think I'll split and then, hmm, I don't know. Think it out loud here. First time I've ever done this. Probably could have cut that just a smidgen closer to the next go round. Quite sticky still. I did attempt to push it through a gel but I'm not sure how much it, um, if it went through a full gel, because I wanted to end up here to check on it. Okay, so then I'll have this section here and it does have mostly the wood grain on it so that I could um, trim some samples. 
Now, let me think here. My splitter or my silk cutter will only let me go so far. So, I think I want to cut the very end of this off. And then I need to decide how I want these bars to be. Okay, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and do this at three inches. That's gonna be a mighty chunky bar of soap, but the idea, oh, I see I did the wrong, did the wrong end, I think, for starter, so I might remeasure that. But so far, here we have this side with the lace and we have a little bit of the wood grain put it on it's it's very sticky so but that looks really nice doesn't it my line turned out quite nice anyway you can see that it's still quite sticky so I need to see how long this is still So I can still get another three bars out of this length. These are mighty chunky, but the whole idea is that you would have plenty to work with on each side for his and hers. So I do think that's going to be a-okay. I must say, this soap does give me some ideas. So this is going to be awesome cut into just even a couple just for samples. So yay, I always love the samples. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to cut this soap because I want it to go ahead and do its thing all at once. that's on the bottom is doing okay. It's not getting smushed or anything. I probably could have made the batch just a bit smaller as far as so it wasn't quite so tall. But again, I'm thinking out loud. I haven't used it yet, so I'm gonna have to wait a while. Good long while before I even can test it out. It smells so good though, the cashmere and the leather together. Yeah, that's a good, good, good blend. I just I love the swirls. You gotta have the imagination. It's going to change. Chonke. I wish the cashmere didn't turn quite as much as it did. I wish it was a little bit more like the uh, this side, which I'm looking here. 
looks like I have a little bit of crackling from the titanium dioxide. So that pretty much tells me that yes, it did go ahead and gel. Okay, so it's going to be a while, but I'll come back and update you on how the colors have changed. And we'll see what we think then. Okay, so here we have the leather and lace soap. It's been several weeks, and I've cleaned these bars up, and I just think they look so good. The cashmere stayed a little bit more yellow than I thought it would, so I'm kind of surprised about that. The uh, leather side is just really, really nice. Isn't it just so pretty? It smells so good. If you like leather and there's some sweetness from the cashmere and it's kind of, you get that hint of cocoa and it's, it is really just so, so good. I love it. It was such a great idea. So I thank my subscriber for detailing it out for me. We emailed back and forth. And at this point, she's probably wondering what happened to me. I haven't talked to her in a few weeks. But the soap is made, and it's almost done curing. And they are chunky bars, real chunky. They're running about 7 to 8 ounces. So the whole thought process, well, let's see. I'll move you over a little bit. So the whole thought process was you have one big hunk in your bath, and the dude, if he likes leather, he can soap up with the leather side. And if the lady wants to soap up with the cashmere, she can do that. And if either one of them just wants to roll it all around because they love the scents, because that's totally what I do, I'm sure my husband would as well, then that's what they can do. Isn't it just such a fun idea? And I just love this. Look at that. I love this color. I'm totally going to make a soap like that. Hopefully you're in focus. But anyway, I could go on and on. I just think it turned out so great. And it was such a fun project to work on. This is my new favorite cake stand picture taking thingamajigger. And anyway, it just turned out so good. I just love them all. And I definitely foresee myself making this again. In this style, it would be really fun if the fragrance um, was more white with just the pink swirl. Or this could be just done like a blue swirl and a pink swirl. Wouldn't that make a fun, like a baby shower type soap if maybe they weren't finding out what they were having? You could do like a pink swirl and a blue swirl or something like that. That would be neat too. So, anyway... Here is the soap, and I'm going to make some other soap. I'm all prepped here, and I will talk to you guys later.